Hey everyone, Aaron here from MTG Challengers bringing you another standard deck tech. Today I'll be going over my version of Boros Burn. So this is basically a red splash white hyper aggressive deck, except it primarily uses spells rather than creatures to get your opponent to zero life. With Shocklands, Thoughtseize, Mana Confluence, and other staples, Magic players pay a lot of life in this standard environment, and this deck basically exploits that just by playing a ton of burn spells, as well as a few creatures that complement them. It's a really fun deck to play, very easy and straightforward for beginning players, and it can also be made really cheap by simply adjusting the mana base. So, getting into the specific cards, I have 8 creatures in total, 4 Eidolon of the Great Revel, and 4 Chandra's Phoenix. The Eidolon is a really awesome card for a deck like this. Uh, every single point of damage counts here, so this guy is really important. It will hurt you as well, but it will usually hurt your opponent more since they are going to be hit by it first when you play it and pass. Not much else to say about it, it helps them get to zero, which is exactly what this deck wants. Basically anything that they play to remove it will still lose them too, so you'll still get value, and it disrupts their spells, especially if they're low on life. And then I have Chandra's Phoenix, one of the best cards in the entire deck. It's a haste creature with evasion, which is amazing. Gets in there for two on the turn it comes into play, which is awesome for this deck. And the ability makes it amazingly resilient. Basically, this entire deck is built around the premise of dealing damage to your opponent with red spells, so you'll be able to keep recurring it over and over again, keep getting it back into your hand and recasting it, dealing more damage. Great against stuff like Supreme Verdict in particular. And probably the coolest thing about it is that if you have multiples in the grave, you still only have to play one spell and it triggers for all of them, so you get all of them back in your hand and then just recast them and bash in. One of the pillar cards of the deck and those eight are all the creatures I have. Uh, the rest of the deck is just burn spells. Four shock is just nice for a turn one play. Two damage does kill a decent bit of stuff. Uh, all the turn one plays like elvish mystics and also mute vault which is a big one. It's also great against Thoughtseize, uh, they cast it to look at your hand, you can shock them in response and they'll be down 4, maybe even 6 life if they paid life for a shock land on turn 1, which is basically the best case scenario for you. Lightning Strike is a great burn spell, it's kind of mandatory to have a playset of a 2 mana deal 3 spell, and that's exactly what this does. 3 damage kills a lot, but again, you'll usually just be dealing it to the face. Next up, I have a playset of Magma Jet. Again, it's another burn spell. It's 2 mana for 2 damage, which isn't all that great, but Scrying 2 can be amazing. You'll deal them some damage and get rid of lands or whatever it was on top of your library so you can draw into another burn spell and replace it. It's an amazing card for tempo. Skullcrack is imperative as a 4 of. Life gain is basically this deck's arch enemy, so this helps to shut it down and deal a decent 3 damage on top of that. It can only deal it to players, unfortunately, but again, that's usually what we're doing anyway. My favorite thing to do with this card is casting it in response to a Sphinx's Revelation. They'll probably be tapped out for it, so they won't be able to counter it or anything. And when a control deck revs against this deck, the life gain is extremely important for them, uh, sometimes even more so than the cards. So taking that life advantage away and losing them 3 more on top of everything is a tremendous hit to their chances of victory. And then I have probably the best card in the entire deck, Boros Charm. 2 mana to deal 4 to their face is an amazing deal, and without this card this deck probably wouldn't even exist. It's a 4 of of course. I never ever use the double strike ability here since it's always better to just deal the 4 damage for this deck. And the indestructible mode in game 2 is decent when you have stuff like chain to the rocks, but we almost always just deal the 4 damage. And it's a great feeling to wipe out 20% of their starting life total with one spell. Just an amazing card, and definitely the number one reason to run white here. 3 Searing Blood is really good when the circumstances are right. You can kill their little mana dork or aggressive creature and deal them 3, which is amazing tempo. But like I said, it is circumstantial. You need to kill the creature for the other half to work, so that's why it's only a 3 of. But it's a great spell most of the time. And then I have another 3 of, which is Toil and Trouble. We basically only use Trouble in this deck, and it's an amazing burn spell most of the time. It usually deals 4 at minimum, and I've done it for 7 many times. It's especially good against control decks since they like to keep their hand full so you can take advantage of that. It's basically another anti-Sphinx's revelation card. In fact, my absolute favorite thing to do in this deck is to skull crack in response to their revelation, and then untap and cast trouble. That's such an amazing interaction, and they just lose after that usually. Also, what's interesting about this particular deck is the fact that we're running Mana Confluence. So if it would be beneficial to us, we can actually cast Toil as well, which is an option that previous burn decks didn't have. 
We can cast it on ourselves if we need cards, or we can fuse it in the late game to make them lose two life, get two more cards in their hand, and then just blow them out with all the damage. Only a three of, since it's usually just terrible if you can't play it early on, especially up against an aggressive deck late game, it's basically the worst card in your deck since their hand will be long gone. And then I have the final spell in the deck, War Leader's Helix. Really great as a 3 of. Late game, if you aren't drawing those Boros charms and you need a 4 damage spell to close the game out, and it does gain you life back as well, which can be really great if you have an Eidolon out or something. It can also deal the damage to creatures, unlike Boros Charm, so it'll take out a Loxodon Smiter or a Courser of Crew Fix no problem. So that's it for the spells, let's move on to the mana base. 4 Mana Confluence is really good here. We want as few tap lands as possible since this is an aggressive deck, and it's also good since it gives us the flexibility of being able to cast Toil when it benefits us. Then I have 4 Sacred Foundry, which should be self-explanatory, and I also have 2 Temple of Triumph, just to make sure that we always get one white source for that Boros Charm. I also have a playset of Mutavault, really amazing card for this deck, it provides mana to cast burn spells in the early game, and can bash in for the final points of damage in the late game, which makes it well worth it. And then I just have 9 basic mountains for a total of 23 lands. So that's it for the main board, let's take a look at the sideboard. First off, I have 2 Magma Spray, really great card in a variety of matchups, great against green-white decks playing Voice of Resurgence, any decks playing Mutavault of course, and it's also awesome in the mirror since it will permanently remove their phoenixes. 3 Chain to the Rocks is a great card for the side for just some miscellaneous removal. If you're having issues with creatures that aren't protected from white, this card can take care of it for you at a very cheap 1 mana. Then I have 3 copies of Mizium Orders. Awesome sideboard card up against mid-range decks running bigger creatures like Loxodon Smiter, Corsair of Crufix, Stormbreath Dragon, and Blood Baron of Escopa. The Overload is also there, and it actually does happen a reasonable bit. A fourth Searing Blood is nice to have in the side against the aggressive decks, where it will almost always be relevant, since they'll be running a lot of 1 and 2 toughness creatures. 3 Deicide is really where the Splash of White comes in handy for the sideboard. Straight Mono Red just doesn't have very many ways to get rid of enchantments, and in a format like this, that's definitely necessary. Necessary. Detention Sphere and Banishing Light are bad for the Phoenix, so having a way to deal with them is nice, and it will of course deal with any and all gods in one fell swoop. Then I have a couple more 1 ofs, one more Toil Trouble, and one more War Leader's Helix. Like the one Searing Blood, these are just here to be sided in to give you a full playset of a card that's particularly good in a certain matchup, so they're nice to have. And finally, I have one Chandra Pyromaster. Good in both aggressive and control matchups, you can use her plus one to just knock off their aggressive creatures one by one, all while burning them out, and her zero ability can be used to race the control decks in terms of card advantage. So that's it for this deck tech, feel free to check out our others. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the Facebook page, and consider making a donation if you'd like to support this project. Thanks for visiting, and if you like what you see, subscribe for more Magic the Gathering content.